Now, I'm going to start with some basic, uh, sort of some basic things about, about stock or cattle. And, and uh, uh, those of you that went from know this, I mean, this is just, I don't need to spend much time, and we're a little bit behind, so I think I'll just get through this quickly. But, uh, you know, you need to be thinking about, you know, where are these cattle coming from? What's the risk level on these cattle? And obviously, uh, sale barn cattle compared to cattle that are fresh out of the country, a big, big difference in those in terms of what you need to do in terms of your receiving and, and, and pharmaceutical approaches. Uh, but we need to put them into a good environment. And we need to, this is a, one of the problems that we sometimes see is we'll, these bigger stocker operations, they just got so much going on, it's hard for them to really keep track of what's going, uh, what, what they have. And, and to keep their place good and clean and, and have a good, healthy environment for those calves when they come in. So we need to understand that there's a lot we can do with pharmaceuticals and that sort of thing. But the key to getting these calves going is to get them to eat. And so you have to put some effort into that. And, and it really becomes an art. So those folks that really are very successful at straightening out sale on the calves, they just, they, they know what to do. They, they live with these calves. They can see it happening before it happens. And uh, they really understand the need to get those calves on the feed. So we need to be using a good, fresh starter feed that's going to, going to have some real good uh, uh, palatability characteristics to it. And we need to combine that with uh, probably a good green grass hay. And so we work with lots of folks on lots of different ways of starting these calves. But all of them that have been really successful typically start with some, some good green grass hay because that's something that most of these calves will have seen. And a lot of them may, may not have seen any other kinds of feeds or anything like that. So they need, we need to get them going on something that they recognize. So basically, it's just a matter of putting some good green grass hay in the bunk and getting them to kind of go up and, and realize that there's something I need to eat. And then getting some good fresh concentrate on top of that. Typically, once they get a taste of that, uh, they, they'll, they'll get on it pretty quickly. But there are calves that, you know, that just will never go up and maybe they're a little bit more timid or passive. They won't go up and, and fight at the bump there early on. And so we have to identify those calves, get them to the side or, uh, or do something to get them up there and get them started. So again, kind of, it's an art. But you've got to be watching those calves and, and make sure that they do start eating in the first uh, day that they're at your place. <coughs> So the environment again, uh, good you know, good clean lot is uh, is is what's most desirable. Uh, we needed to have shade, some dripping water, so they are able to find the waters very quickly. Do we have this information? Yes. Is that incorporated into your narrative? Yes, it's in. A, there's a paper. It's about 11 pages in the book. A lot of this detail will be in there. And if I skip some stuff, just just know that it is in there. Um, this this presentation also will be will be here with John and we can we can get that to you if you want it. Um, we want to avoid mud and, and probably more than anything else, we want to avoid turning these calves out in pastures. Because uh, you know very small pastures will be fine, but if you get them out where they can kind of get over to the back and hide, the ones that are a little bit uh, temperamental or, or maybe a little bit slow to come up, you might miss those in those early days. So typically the first week or so it's good to have these calves leave. Do have them somewhat confined and have a good have, have a good opportunity to look at them and make sure they're going well. Now a little bit of a little bit of pointers on starter feeds, and I'm going to show you a, kind of a, a homemade one here in just a second, and there's some discussion about this in the paper. But uh, we really need to be thinking about what do these calves lack when they come in. Most of these calves that are coming in and to stocker operations have not seen a good mineral supplementation program. They've not seen any feed, and so we have this challenge. They come in, they're probably going to be deficient in selenium, copper. Uh, they, they may be a little bit short on vitamin E status, but we need to make sure that our, our starter feed carries those trace minerals and vitamins. And, uh, you know, we can get away very well with the free choice mineral program for cows. It works quite well. But for these calves, we really need to be early on trying to get that in them, to get them completed as quickly as we can. So. Uh, you know, a good way to do this with a whole mix, if you're if you're smaller and making your own feed, is to put a uh, is to put a good quality mineral there in the feed mix at, at about two percent. Uh, larger producers, we most of those that I work with, we do have a special starter mineral that's been designed around uh, experiences at their farm, and then uh, and then what they expect in the calf, the type of calves that they're that they're buying. These vary somewhat operation to operation. And then uh, I, I said that about the grass hay, so I won't. Into that again. 
the advocates get a lot of questions about that. What, what, you know, what's the latest thing? I think I got that question this morning. What's the latest thing in this nutrition thing? Well, there's lots of stuff on this list that we probably ought to be using. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, uh, not as much antibiotics fed now as there used to be at one time. That's still an option. But uh, some kind of coccidia control, either VCOX or, or one of the ionophores. Uh, you know, probably Lomitac is the choice for these starting ones, although we do have people that very successfully do it with Lumins. But either one of those needs to be in there to give you the coccidia control. Because a lot of these calves come in and they've got coccidia in them. And as soon as they go through the stress of being marketed and transported, uh, then you can have those breaks of coccidiosis. So we need to make sure that we're taking care of that. Of course, the ionophores give us some benefit in feed efficiency and, and, and gain as well. So they're, they're kind of what we do generally in turn to that. Uh, I just put a few other examples here. Uh, you know, yeast culture, some of the seaweed extract type products. There's other stuff out there that I get lots of calls. You know, I saw an ad for this or for that, or somebody told me this is the greatest thing. And there are a lot of those that have potential, but there's not a lot of research that just really strongly uh, backs up the use of any of those. Uh, and, and I'll just tell you, they, they, I think that they have some value, but they're, no, they're nothing compared to the mark of getting cast feet. And so sometimes that kind of distracts us from the good basic management approaches we need. So, uh, you know, for my, most of the ones I worked with, we do try to get them either remiss or Mobitech, you know. The, the other stuff we do, uh, in some of these custom starters, we do have some chelated trace minerals to try to improve the status of those, but, uh, but not a lot of others. Now, just I'll, I'll throw it in right here. I didn't put it up here, but uh, there is a, you know, there's a lot of growing interest in using a, a product called Multi-Min. It's, it's basically an injectable trace mineral, and uh, that particular product is, is, uh, is getting, some, getting some popularity for getting, again, getting these calves caught up in terms of their overall. Status. Just a, uh, just this is just an example, and, and again, it's in the paper, so you don't need to you know, put too much time into it. But this is a, a kind of a basic formula that we we've been using for a long time. Lots of variations on this depending on what ingredients you might have, but uh, uh, you know, basically some soybean meal, good quality protein. Uh, a variety of, uh, you know, this one's with uh, soybean hulls, corn, and, and corn gluten feed. That's not really critical uh, what those blends are. You can use some distiller's grains or some other ingredients in there. But these mixes tend to be a little bit more palatable. The calves tend to start on that a little bit quicker than they do uh, something like just a ground corn and soybean meal type, uh, type of feed. And you see the remnants levels in here that we, we try to put. Uh, Cottonseed hulls. Um, is the one ingredient that is uh, probably one of the more mysterious ingredients we've ever worked with. It's very low in its nutritional value, very low digestibility, very low protein, but calves absolutely love, and, and cows and, and dairy as well. And so that's usually put in just to kind of stimulate their intake and, and again, some very, very, uh, very good uh, programs and some good commercial feeds are actually based on having some cotton seed in there for, for palatability. 